So in the last video, I showed you about this uh, formal definition for a derivative. Remember, that's just uh, how we found the slope of the tangent. And it may look gross, but I showed you with the uh, autograph um, a little bit about how it works. Now, our goal is to use that formal definition to solve this question here. In other words, to find the uh, gradient of f of x equals x squared at the point x equals 1, y equals 1. So at this point right here, we want to try to find this this value right here, the gradient or the slope of the tangent at this point. So I'm going to show you, now uh, my goal is to get to this equation right here. What I want to do is show you that. So how to get to the formal definition of a derivative. In other words, you know, how do we actually sort of derive it? Um, and I think it helps to just look at this example we were looking at here. So let's just say we sort of look at a generic graph. So let's say it's some sort of graph like this. But it turns out it doesn't matter the equation of the graph. This could be any graph. So the equation is f of x. That's the equation of this graph in general. So the idea is we pick a point. And remember now that the slope at a point, well, let's just define it in general. Here. It's just equal to, well, uh, actually I shouldn't say slope at a point. More formally, I should say slope uh, between two points because we need two points to do this. Between two points, while well, the slope is just going to be equal to the change in y over the change in x. Some people call this rise over run. Some people like to call it y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If one point is you know x1, y1, and the other point is x2, y2. By the way, this uh, y looked like an x, so I'm just going to erase it and try to draw a little bit clearer. There we go. So, this is the idea here. We have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In other words, a change in y over a change in x. So if this right here is the point I'm interested in, then I'm going to define its value as x. Well, that should make sense. And what's its y value? So at, at x equals, well, x, its y value is just f of x. I don't know if that makes any sense, but at any, at any equation, you know, at any x value, the value of your function is defined as f of x. Okay, that's a bit boring. So what I have to do then is pick a second point. So maybe in a different color here, maybe in red, I'm going to draw another point. So let's say I draw my point here. This is my second point. Now I'm going to draw that point at a certain distance away. So that second point right here is going to be at a certain distance away, and it's going to be you know this distance right here. So whatever this right here is, so I'm going to say this is actually x plus h. So I'm going to define this distance here as just some little h here. I could have defined it as any letter I wanted. I'm just going to undo that last little step here. So what this means is that I take the point I'm interested in. This is the key thing here, the point I really want Okay, at x. If I want my derivative at this point, what I do is I invent another point and I make it a little bit farther away. I set it h units away. So maybe h is 10. Well, then I make this 10 units away. So if this was, let's say x was 1, then if I made h 10, well, then this would be 11 over here because it would be, you know, 1 plus h. So that would be 10, let's say. That's just one way of explaining it here. So I take my second point here and I make it some distance away. Well, how would I define the value of my function here? I mean, what's this value? Well, I still have to follow the rules of f of x, but it's going to be f of, and this time it's x plus h. I don't know if that made any sense, but if it did, then we're all set for the definition of a derivative because what I'm looking for now is the slope of this. In other words, I want the rise over the run. And that means then, if I want that, what I do is, maybe I'll draw this now in green. The idea then behind the slope is this. I'm going to take my delta y, which is this right here. That's my change in y. And I'm going to divide that by the change in x, which, just to make it clear here, that's going to be this, delta x. I don't know if that makes any sense here, but I'm basically saying rise over run for the slope between this point and this point. So look at it carefully then. So that means then, if I want this, I'm going to define it as the derivative. I'm going to call f primed of x. That's what the derivative means. So the derivative at 
this point. At this point x right here, if I want to know what the slope of the tangent is doing at this point, well, what I do in general is, well, I'm going to leave a little space right here. What I do is, well, I take my y value, so y2, which in this case is going to be this value right here. So it's, let's see, what's its y value? It's f of x plus h. So it's going to be f of x plus h. And I have to subtract from that y1. So it's going to be, let's see, well, this is y2, so this is y1, so that's going to be f of x. Just to make it clear, by the way, I'll make this like this. So x1, y1 is going to equal, just to give you the coordinates here, it's going to be equal to, well, just x, f of x. That's going to be the sort of x and y coordinates. It's going to be x and f of x. But x2, y2 is going to be equal to x plus h. That's going to be the x value. And the y value is going to be this. So this, I don't know if that made it any clearer or maybe less clear, but just so we know, at least we've got this point right here. Uh, this is y2, x2, or x2, y2. This is x1, y1. So this is the case, then I want y2, so that's going to be this one right here, so f of x plus h. Subtract from that y1, which is f of x. So that's why it's going to be f of x plus h minus f of x, all that divided by, well, I need x2 minus x1. In other words, I need this x value, which is x plus h, minus x1, which is just x. So this is how I would do this in general. Now that's what it would be at any value. But what I do, well, let's take a look at this first of all. These x's will actually cancel out. So this, this plus x right here, that one will cancel out with that one there. So this one here disappears with that one. So that means I'm left with just f prime of x equals f of x plus h minus f of x, all that over h. But that's what it is over here. But the whole idea, what I showed you before with autograph, I'm not sure if you remember that, but uh, what I showed you with autograph before was that the whole idea was not to make your second point really far away from your first point, but to make this point really, 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 really close. Now, how close? Well, as close as you can without being there. And the way we formally write that in math, we actually say, this is why we write it like this. So this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0. So what this really means then is, although we have this at some distance h, what it says to do is make h infinitely small. Make h as small as you can make it. Make it approach 0. So this is how we actually do it. Now, Practically speaking, why don't you just make h equal to 0 then? I mean, why are we bothering with this, with this weird definition? Why don't we just say, well, fine, make h 0? Well, because no matter what you set on the top, if you divide by 0, it's undefined. So you can't, you can't make h equal to 0. Well, not quite. If you make h 0 here, this whole equation here falls apart. You don't get an answer. In fact, that will be the case always. So what you have to do, you have to be a bit clever. You have to hope that something good happens when you work out the top part. So what I'm going to show you then is how to do this with a practical example. By the way, we've just derived the formal definition of a derivative. So if you look over here, we've just come up with this equation here. So I hope you sort of buy that. Now this equation may look horrible, and I agree. It actually does look really ugly. And you might start sort of sweating, think, oh my god, do I have to solve all derivatives in this way? Nope. But I'm going to show you this just once. After this, in the next videos, I'm going to show you tricks. So basically, I'm never going to use that formal definition again. Okay, so I'm going to show you, so I've shown you the formal definition. I'm going to show you how to use it with an example. And after this, then I'm going to show you tons of tricks because we don't do this every time. This would be tedious. But it, I think it helps just to show you once how to use it. So let's use the formal definition of a derivative to find the gradient of this equation at this point. So remember now, the formal definition of the derivative is this f primed at any point x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, all that divided by h. I mean, going through a formal definition of what a limit is is actually important because, uh, I mean, although you can't quite make h 0, you have to get infinitely close. Now, how do I actually do this in practice? 
Well, I mean, I, I could um, I could actually solve this, because keep in mind, I want this at x equals 1. So I could actually say f primed of 1 right away and actually figure this out. So I could say f of 1 plus h minus f of 1, all that over h. I could figure that out. But what I want to show you is the generic answer. So I want to show you it sort of in general. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find f primed of x for our example. So our f of x rule is going to be that anytime you see something, you square it. That's what this rule here says. That's what my equation is. So even though I'm looking for it at x equals 1 and y equals 1, but technically I want it at x equals 1 here at this particular point. Although I'm looking for that, I'm going to find this equation at any point. That's really powerful because then all I have to do is just put in what x value I want. Because if I wanted it at x equals 5 or x equals 10 or x equals 20, I don't want to have to redo this every time. That would be annoying. So I'm going to find one generic equation that works for this always. And that way then I just have to plug in what x value I want. So f primed of x is going to be. Now I'm going to just have to write this a lot of times. So limit as h approaches 0 of. Now I need f of x plus h. But my equation f of x does this. Take my junk here and square it. So if I want it for x plus h, then it has to be x plus h squared. I'm going to take that, subtract from it, just well, x squared. Because that's just f of x. f of x is just x squared. So I take f of x plus h, which is x plus h squared, because that's my rule here. I have to take whatever junk I have and square it. I subtract from that x squared because that's what f of x is, all that divided by h. Awesome, okay. So should I just make h zero? Nope, I can't do that yet because the whole equation falls apart. So I have to be more clever than that. So what I should maybe do is expand the x plus h. So it's not just x squared plus h squared. That's what a lot of students think. So let's maybe do this off to the side here. So x plus h, I want this squared. So I'm going to write it out twice. x plus h times x plus h. And some people use a trick called FOIL. So uh, first times first, and then outside times outside, inside times inside, and then last times last. It doesn't matter what you call it. You just have to multiply everything by everything else. So x times x is x squared. Uh, x times h is xh. h times x is still xh. And h times h is h squared. So that gives me x squared plus, well, I've got two of these, so 2xh plus h squared. That is what I get here. So just to continue on, so limit as h approaches 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. I'm just rewriting this as this here. All that then, don't forget about this original one, so minus h x squared. All that over h. Well, can I make anything exciting happen? Sure I can. The x squared here and this one cancel each other out. Positive x squared minus x squared gives you, well, nothing. They cancel out. Well, that's nice. And furthermore, I can go one step further and say the limit as h approaches 0. It's still the same thing. It's still f primed of x here that I'm doing. Let's see now. I can write 2xh plus h squared. I can actually, well, I mean, I can write that out. 2xh plus h squared. Turns out I can rewrite that as just, I can take out a factor of h. So they both have an h in common. So I can say that's 2x plus h. Turns out this is the same thing as this. What I noticed is that there's an h common to both of these terms. So I take out 1h. If I take out 1h, there's just a 2x left, so 2x. And if I take out 1h from this, well, then there's only an h here. If you're not sure, you can always multiply it out. This times this gives me this. And h times h gives me h squared. So this is the same. So I'm going to rewrite it then as just h times 2x plus h, all that over h. And now look what happens. This h and this h cancels out. So that means then I have f primed of x in general is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h. Hey, now I can make h 0. So as I make h be 0, then it just cancels out. So that means f primed of x equals 2x. This is important. It's not my final answer. This tells me then that if I want the gradient of this graph at any point, 
is just going to be, well, whatever x value you want multiplied by 2. So that means if I want to answer this question right here, so at, at x equals 1, in other words, f primed of, whoops, not f primed of x anymore, but f primed of 1, in other words, this derivative at x equals 1 is going to be just 1 times 2, which is just 2. Phew! So that was really long, and that was actually quite ugly. But we can actually use our trusty graphing calculator if you have a TI-83, for example, or a TI-84. Let's say I do y equals x squared, and I graph that. Let's say I press graph here. Now, uh, whoops, I was doing some drawings before, so I better just clear my drawings here. There we go. So I've got my graph of x squared. What this tells me then is if I, if I use this little calc here, so I go second trace, that gives me calc. I can actually ask my calculator for the dy dx. See, that's the derivative. So I press 6 here to get to that one. And basically I can just say, well, at x equals 1, what happens? At x equals 1, dy dx is 2. Well, hallelujah, look, I got that same answer. And so that means that although it took us a long time, we got the same answer that the calculator does. The reason why I like this form here, this f primed of x, is this works for any x value. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. So that's why doing it at x equals 1 is just a small little step. Once you figure it out for any value, then it's just this. This is really powerful because this will tell you, well, what about if I wanted at this point right here, at x equals 0? Well, I can imagine my uh, tangent line will be some horizontal line. And that slope had better be 0. Let's see if it really is. If I put x equals 0, 0 times 2 is still 0. Oh, great, it works here. What if I have it at x equals negative 1? So let's say it's over here. Well, my slope better be negative. Let's see, does that really work? Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Yep, that's going to work. And if I make my x value bigger, let's say I make it, I don't know, 2. Well, at 2, it's going to be much steeper. Look up here. If I drew the tangent line up here, it would be some really steep line here. If I made this x equals 2, 2 times 2 is 4, which means the slope is twice as steep as what it was at x equals 1. Here. At x equals 1, the slope was 2. And it was only that steep. But at x equals 2, the slope is twice as steep. It's 4 now. So this equation right here helps us for anything. Now, although this might have been super gross and annoying, um, I think it's useful to have gone through it at least once. But from now on, I'm going to show you all sorts of nice tricks. So if you haven't cried yet, great, because now it gets a lot better.